insect as interactant in the spirit of the artist, symbol, anti-symbol. Slightly different, thank you. Is it here? Yes. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, thus uh, going to talk uh, on the interaction of insects and uh, art, which is just another way to use insects as uh, models, actually. Uh, as for many other uh, animal groups, uh, the presence of insects in art is a reality that you probably encountered uh, uh, here and there in different contexts. Uh, it's shown here across uh, time at different uh, instances. And when did this all start? Uh, um, it's a bit difficult to state with certainty, but this wood uh, sculpture here uh, is uh, probably one of the earliest traces uh, uh, of it. Uh, I, I encountered it uh, completely by chance a few weeks ago. It was laying in display at uh, an exhibition uh, in Lyon, uh, and it's uh, Coleoptera. Uh, it is from the cave of Arcy uh, sur Cure in, in Burgundy, in central France, uh, and dated around uh, 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 minus 15 a thousand years, it represents a ground beetle, although it is named a uh, bepressid. You see the head, the three parts, the, the, the thorax and the, the, the three uh, layers, and it's probably a, a, a lower face uh, with the abdomen, etc. Uh, it is thought to be a shamanic instrument, uh, which is a mixture of art, uh, religions, uh, and medicine. Uh, but uh, after that, uh, we will skip in time and suggest an introduction to what has been done in uh, this context. Uh, and uh, Marcel Dicke, who is uh, here in, in the audience uh, about 15 years ago, did a, a, a very interesting compilation and, and work on uh, the similar work, uh, uh, but in uh, Western painting. And uh, the, the summary of this work as opposed to, to what I'm trying to, to go uh, now, uh, is that the, the context of the, the art described in this paper was overall uh, uh, quite uh, academic, which, which means uh, uh, very charged in symbolic, so it, you have a very restricted representation of the insect and, and, and the symbols that are in it, uh, and also, um, uh, it it uh, has a very high moralistic uh, background. Uh, well, it's, this is the uh, you know the definition of the uh, the classicist uh, uh, background that, that uh, ha has been encountered with the, the many dif different insects that has been shown here. Uh, my uh, purpose was rather different, and uh, it will be a kind of minority report on insect in art from now on. So, it will be on tiny insects in the history of art. Sorry. Uh, it started for me when I visited a museum. It, it was very, uh, you know, unexpected. Uh, with this painting from uh, Jan Bruegel, another Flemish guy, uh, uh, in the 17th century. And uh, this is the case, so it's uh, Bruegel the Young, member of famous dynasty of, of, of uh, Dutch painter. It's a still love with plants, standard, with some insect. You have here green points at some insects. And uh, if you go around the painting, you, you see other insects here also in green and butterfly in green. But if you go further, you end up with this. Uh, and uh, this is obviously uh, an aphid, and I'm an aphid guy, uh, and I've been working for 25 years on this kind of insect, and it was the first, first time I encountered it in, in a painting, and what a painting. So I was a, a bit shocked, uh, and, and then something started in my mind, and uh, this is a story of, of, of it now, okay? So... Basically, when we see this, uh, what, what is this? So it was actually, uh, uh, the, first, uh, the first question is, which aphid was it? And the, uh, the answer was not so difficult in this case because of some precisions uh, of the painter. It ended up with Neomyces circumflexes, 
for the, the stripes uh, and the crescent like, it's the crescent like lily aphid, and, and here we have a crescent. And uh, also the host plant, it's a liliaceae. Uh, so uh, all these criteria ended up with a single characterization, so it was easy. It's uh, probably because it was Jan Bruegel that did the right job for, for doing this. Okay? So, uh, what does it tell, tell, tell us? It's, it's a case of, I will not go in, in, in detail because you have hundreds of pages in books like this on the details in painting, but the, the summary of it is that the activity of the artist here reflects something of, I know what I'm painting, and probably you see the painting and you don't know what I'm painting, but I do. So it's, it's a part of, uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's a, a bit a demonstration of power of the artist to, to paint really things that are the exact reality. And the other also, it's, it's a poster of freedom because this is not expected in academic painting to have such weird insect in, the, in a painting. And so it's a, a demonstration of freedom. It is here because it is here in reality, okay? So basically, uh, you have a lot of, of uh, theoretical uh, uh, demonstration of this kind of significance of detail in painting. I will not go, but this is a, a, a good extension of, of this uh, kind of thing in, in, in the painting of, of insects. From now, from here, uh, I, I, I'm a scientist, so I met this for the first time, so was it significant? And we have to redo the experiment. And so the, 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 the stuff started from here. Uh, it was, ex in, in contrast to the work of uh, Marcel Dicke, it was not restricted to painting uh, because now we have Google and other uh, 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 instruments to, to, to do this. So not much, but of course I, I, I went to museum. Uh, you have specialized uh, database that a very nice uh, Dutch database again on, on painting. And also uh, what is interesting to see is uh, that we have to uh, pass through language to, to get these uh, items from, from the real world, okay? So, I'm going to a few examples of this. This is a very uh, important uh, painter and entomologist, uh, Maria Sibylla Merian, both a wonderful artist and uh, also, uh, so uh, as I told it, an entomologist. And notably, she went collecting and painting in situ in Guyana. She got sick from malaria there. Uh, so she was really an entomologist. It is logically that we find representation of aphid in her painting. Uh, we have the red dots here, the red dots here that are aphids, the red dots here. But what is more important that we have all the cohort of parasites and uh, predators of aphid. You have coccinellids here, chrysopid here, you have surfeits here. So it's, it's not only a naturalistic, but it's an ecological painting in the 17th century. So it was uh, probably as accurate as accurate uh, as the Bruegel painting, but the, the objective was not the same. It was a scientific objective, uh, although she was uh, a painter. Next example, uh, it's something weird, because you, you, you will tell me this, there is no aphid here, okay? Sorry? Because of the microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, but I, I um, yeah, sorry. So, uh, what, uh, before I'm going further, what is important to see here is the, the relative size of, of, of Jesus, of Mary, and the Mary of Magus, with, with, who is Saint Anne. You have a small, you have a, a two level size, and, but, this adult is, is really not at the size of an adult in, in front of the mother, okay? So it was interesting because we encountered here uh, on a blog art uh, this comparison with a matryoshka-like uh, description of this kind of, this, paint, this, this is not a painting, this is a sculpture, and, and it's most common for sculpture in the 13th to 16th century, and it's a very common topos in northern uh, uh, Europe. And this is the, the, the topos here, you have other example, and this is the topos uh, uh, of the parthenogenesis and the immaculate con conception, okay? So, of course, there is no aphid, there, there is just uh, an, an art blogger that did this comparison, but it is interesting because it's a lineage 
of what has been done after that uh, in the history of, uh, of aphid and reproduction. Uh, Charles Bonnet, uh, who, whom you know now, uh, uh, he's a Swiss painter, he's a student of uh, Réaumur, and uh, he gave the, the first description of parthenogenesis, uh, although the term was coined later by a, a British guy, and what is very interesting here, it's, it's the, the, the first uh, scientific article that I, I had to read uh, in the history, because there is a very thorough description day by day of the laying, so it's a table with results. You have uh, uh, detailed methods and supplementary material, etc. So this is really the start, and, and this is, ha has been noticed by uh, Jules Hoffman uh, before, the start of, of modern entomology through the, the advent of these kind of research. But uh, uh, it's also uh, what is important for our model, uh, uh, one lineage where you have parthenogenesis, so I called it, this, the, this is the female aphid, and it has an impact in, uh, in history. For example, uh, 100 years uh, uh, later almost, a letter from Delacroix, the famous painter, about a reading in La Revue, and this is a summary of this. What a pity that such a brilliant, he was talking of, of Bonnet, brilliant man and man has lost his time and eyes for understanding the venial sin of such hideous animal, which is a reproduction of aphid. And look at the end of the sentence, it's exactly what, what Jules Hoffman said with Malherbe. Uh, so, uh, well, uh, the, it's an exemplification of the uselessness of scientists, uh, and of course of the insect they, they are studying. The next is also on the same subject, and it's a uh, 100 years later. It's Simone de Beauvoir in his most famous uh, work, and uh, you, you will see that here uh, you have, oh, the, the uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, a kind of introduction on uh, the data of biology to her uh, work, and uh, she is uh, citing the uselessness of males uh, in society uh, and uh, uh, in aphid uh, population, males are often absent for a series of generations without harm to the society. So the, the background of the message was, was that it was that it was not really natural that males are so important in society. Okay, so you, you can take the message. It's also a message on uh, uh, the female aphid, uh, I called it the super female aphid in this case. Victor Hugo, one of, of uh, the, the geniuses of French literature, uh, he uh, uh, coined a list in a, in a poetry, in a poem here, you have a list of uh, um, um, <laughs> uh, spiders uh, and uh, worms and slugs, and crabs, and uh, toads, and so with a list of monsters, and aphid is a monster among the monsters. So here it's the topos of the evil aphid, le vil puceron, uh, which is uh, also can be found in other uh, literature parts. And finally, it's, this is my last example. Uh, this is to go to the modern era. It's a, a CD, it's a, a music by a Polish guy who is named Dui Gibord. It's a nickname after Guy Debord, the French philosopher. Uh, and it's a, a, a music uh, a track, a uh, playlist, uh, with, uh, which, which is all on the uh, uh, sickness of plants, the, 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 the plant uh, uh, health problems. And among these, you have four tracks that are citing aphids. I cannot show you, uh, well, I, can, uh, I could have, but the, the time, time is lacking. The music itself, it's, it's called here electronic and noise. Uh, so it's a kind of noise music, but it's a kind of, of concrete music, uh, which is uh, uh, music concrete in the 60s, Pierre Boulez and um, Pierre Henry are the, the promoters of such uh, music, and this is a, 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 a present day continuator of this, so I called it the modern situationist aphid. And so 
if it inspires people uh, presently, and I have uh, finished, this is uh, my lab, this, I'm sorry, uh, uh, it's a, a lab of mi microbiology because I'm working on interaction of bacteria with aphids. Uh, uh, this will be published in an encyclopedia online of aphids uh, that is uh, hold by, held by INRA in, in Rennes, and it's a collaborative work. Many people send me example when they read it or they, they get it in the museums. And here it's uh, just a this is a work, of course, that uh, I'm doing by night, so, but by day, I'm doing other things. And this is the kind of science. I'm, I'm working on the interaction of insect cuticle uh, with bacteria. Uh, and uh, the take home message will be uh, with the Zero in Infini, which is novel by Arthur Kessler, imagining life without the zero, and we will have an idea of a world without insects. Of course, and the very present message. So, thank you for your attention. I, I hope that it was a good year, but. Um,